When Muhammad died 14 centuries ago, the Muslim world needed someone to take the Prophet's place. The Caliphate was the leadership of Islam after the death of Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. The last Caliphate was located here in Istanbul, Turkey. For 400 years, Istanbul and the Topkapi Palace behind me was the political center of the Muslim world. of this missionary invasion was devastating as it succeeded in sowing the seeds of division and declined thought. Western laws and syllabi were introduced into the Islamic State's criminal code and education system respectively, further distancing the Muslims from the Islamic Aqidah and the application of its fruits in daily affairs. The objectives of the missionaries is well summed up by Samuel Zwemer. A leading missionary speaking at a conference in Jerusalem in 1935 where he reminded the Christian missionaries of their objectives. The objective is not to convert Muslims into Christians. This would be an honor for them. Rather, the objective is to stray Muslims away from Islam so that they become individuals with no relationship to Allah. By this, he will be paving the road in the new imperialistic era in the Muslim world. You will be preparing the Muslim mentality to accept to go in the path which you are preparing for them. Turkish nationalism, on the other hand, was also aroused by the Western nations. The establishment of the Young Turks in Paris was to prove another devastating blow to the Islamic State and added to the divisive nationalist sentiments present. In 1908, the Young Turks, or the Committee of Union and Progress, were able to seize power, gaining the explicit approval of the West, for they were made up of like-minded nationalists and secular reformists. Later, when the British and French also supported Arab nationalist sentiments, some from among the Young Turks, such as Jamal Pasha, urged the Arabs to maintain unity among the citizens of the state in a gathering of Arab leaders in Damascus. However, his speech was full of patriotism and can be said to have consolidated patriotism and further distanced the idea of unification upon the Islamic Aqidah alone. and the Western colonialists began to write the epitaph of the Ottoman Caliphate. With the outbreak of World War I, the Islamic State made the fatal mistake of entering the war. Germany had convinced the Sultan to enter the war as an opportunity to reverse the Western occupation of parts of the Islamic State. Knowing the British, French and Russian aspirations to eventually abolish the Caliphate, the Uthmani state entered into what was to prove a disastrous alliance with Germany into the Great War. The 
Simultaneously, the Allies were able to gain the support of the Arabs, and through the treachery of the likes of King Faisal and Sharif Hussein, were able to build an enemy within the Ottoman state. The British supported the Arab calls for independence, as well as promising them autonomy over what they deemed as their own lands. This severely weakened the Ottoman Caliphate, for although they may have been able to repel the external armies, the internal Arab rebellion was impossible to counter. Mustafa Kemal, with his newfound fame after the Battle of Gallipoli, began to suspiciously promote and work for the idea that the Ottoman Caliphate should withdraw from the war despite the victory at Gallipoli. He began to make public his holding of Britain in great esteem over the ally Germany, and with various political maneuvers was able to gain power leading to the eventual official abolishment of the Caliphate. والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافر عندنا يقين والله ان هذا الدين منصور وانه ظاهر وها هي المثلات اليوم نراها بين بين ايدينا وامام اعيننا تدلنا على ان هذا الدين ظاهر وما هي باذن الله تعالى الا مده يسيره وترى ما قاله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما قال في الحديث الصحيح تكون تكون النبوة فيكم ما شاء الله أن تكون ثم يرفعها الله إذا شاء أن يرفعها ثم تكون خلافة ما شاء الله أن تكون ثم يرفعها الله إذا شاء أن يرفعها ثم يكون ملكا عضوضا ما شاء الله أن يكون ثم يرفعه الله إذا شاء أن يرفع ثم يكون ملكا جبريا يكون ملكا جبريا ما شاء الله أن يكون ثم يرفعه الله إذا شاء أن يرفعه ثم قال ثم تكون خلافة على منهاج النبوة وها نحن نترقب اليوم الخلافة التي على منهاج النبوة The really interesting question that we have to ponder right now is what the Middle East will look like in 10 years time. Uh, as I said, there's a tiny possibility that could all end very happily with democracies of a Western style uh, emerging in countries like Egypt and who knows even Libya. But I would be very surprised if that happened. I think it's much more alarming to imagine a world in which is no longer a feudal monarchy but is actually an Islamic republic in the same way that Iran became an Islamic republic in 1979. And if we find ourselves living next to a restored caliphate in which radical Islam is the ideology not just of Iran but the entire region, then the world will have changed in a way that is much more threatening to the security of Europeans, including Britons, than anybody today seems to be taking seriously.
We are rapidly moving toward a dangerous time in our history. Society as we know it is vulnerable to political and social unrest. This impending crisis comes as a consequence of our flawed foreign and domestic economic policy. على منهاج النبوة بعد الملك الجبري قرر مجلس الأمن القومي الأمريكي في آخر تقاريره التي قدمها إلى أوباما بأنه في عام 2025 ميلادية سوف يعلن المسلمون الخلافة يقول صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ثم تكون خلافة على منهاج النبوة ترجع الخلافة الراشدة من جديد بعد الحكم الجبري بعد حكم العسكر تأتي الخلافة الراشدة The Catholic Church recently reported that Islam has just surpassed their membership numbers. Some studies show that at Islam's current rate of growth, in five to seven years, it will be the dominant religion of the world. وهذه الخلافة ليست متقيدة بالمهدي ولكنها قبل المهدي 